guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Gen Con interview. I'm Callie and I'm here with Mike Selinker and uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you guys are doing here at Gen Con. Hey, this is nice to meet you Callie. Uh, this is the Lone Shark Games booth that we're in. Uh, we do a bunch of games. We do Apocrypha, Thornwatch, The Ninth World. Um, we also make the Pathfinder Adventure card game and Betrayal at House on the Hill and things like that. Oh yeah, I love Betrayal House on the Haunted Hill. That's one that I bring out, you know, to play with a lot of different people. So thank you, it's really great to meet you. <laughs> so, uh, which game here, uh, I see you got lots of people playing all the different games. Which games are you most excited to share with our audience? Uh, well, I mean, we could start with the one in front of us, yeah. which is Apocrypha. Do you want to step over yeah, there? Yeah, we could go over here. So this is Apocrypha. This is a, uh, a game that uh, has been long in the making. It actually, the idea preceded the Pathfinder Adventure card game. Um, the, uh, the, the game takes place in the modern day. It takes place on the day you're playing it. And so we have an app that modifies the game every day based on real world events. <laughs> so it literally responds to whatever the news is. Um, wow, that's cool. Yeah. How, how, how did you uh, do that? It's well, we've just built an app that, well, actually, the answer is every day we go into the, uh, our little spreadsheet and say, uh, what's going on? And we type in some stuff, right? We've planned some of it out. So this, this week's all about Gen Con, but, you know, could be anything about what's going on in the White House or in, in international relations or anything, or the, the astrology or the moon or anything like that. So um, the game is about you being saints and your job is to uh, see all the monsters in the world that no one else can see and try to stop their their plans many of which are involved the end of the world and you don't want the end of the world because that's where your stuff is right so uh, you have and you have all these superpowers that allow you to stop them but the problem is you've forgotten all of them so so over the course of playing the game, you gain these fragmentary memories that allow you to build your character to give them all the powers back that you lost. And so over the course of the game, you'll become a totally different character. And it, it plays, uh, it's, a, it's a game that itself can be played in two ways. It can be played uh, against the game, like the Pathfinder Adventure card game, um, or it can be played as a full RPG with a guy. And so, and we give people, uh, but the cool thing about the RPG is you, the game just runs itself. You don't have to administer it as the judge. So, so, so that's a solo version then? No, no, no. There's the, you would be playing with other players. You can play it solo. Many, many people play it solo, right? You can't play the RPG game solo terribly easily, but the, you can play the, the game against the game. Uh, so anyway, the, the point is uh, we've got this game out. This, is, this box down here is the world. Um, these are the two new ones. This is the flesh and the devil. Uh, and they have all sorts of new chapters in them. Um, they, uh, they will be coming out very shortly. They they give, between all these sets uh, and the hybrid mission pack, there are 99 scenarios. Wow. Yeah. So it'll keep <laughs> you... more than Betrayal. Oh, well, now <laughs> Betrayal now and Widow's Walk, it, they're up to 101. Okay, so I guess okay. between the two okay. games, between <laughs> the, my two games, you can play 200 scenarios. So, um, which should be enough, but you never know. I keep getting asked for more. So uh, anyway, uh, it just uh, it's going really well. People really like it. And uh, you know, we tried to break a lot of new ground with it. And I think it came together really well. Awesome. Well, I really, I can't wait to play it, actually. Okay. I hope we get to soon. Yep. Wink to Michael. Uh, <laughs> you want to keep walking around? Yeah, we could just show. Okay. Actually, we could even just talk, and he could show some of the yeah, games absolutely. there. Okay, so if cool. you want to talk about yeah, let's the Thorn Watch. Next. Sure. So uh, what game are people playing over here? OK, so I'm going to hover behind you. I apologize. <laughs> um, so this game is Thornwatch. Thornwatch is a game that we made with the folks at Penny Arcade. Uh, so that's why it looks so amazing. Um, Mike Krahulik is a brilliant artist. He, came, he and his uh, colleague, Jerry, came up with this world called the Ironwood. And the Ironwood is this fantasy forest in which the villagers keep getting into trouble, as villagers will, right? So they tie a bramble knot in a tree and prick their thumbs on it, and then they summon the spirits of the Thornwatch. 
And the Thorn Watch are kind of a fantasy A team. They, they come out of the trees and they do whatever it is they need to do to solve whatever problem the villagers have. The, uh, and then they disappear right back into the forest. So um, these players are playing the Thorn Watch. The, um, they're basically summoned to go deal with a problem. Here they're fighting off these wolf bats called gliders. Um, but they could actually uh, be doing something else like, like uh, uniting two towns uh, that have been separated by an earthquake or things like that, right? So, um, so another uh, deep, compelling world with a lot of different yeah. variety and scenarios as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. The um, storyboards are one of the most beautiful things we've ever produced. Um, hold on one second. Can I grab your storyboard for a second? So you can see, I mean, they're, they're these comic book, like we wanted to make something that looked like it was straight out of a comic book. And so you can see on the table that we put these panel borders around every map tile. So it looks like the characters are transferring between comic book panels. Uh, you know, and it's a feel like you just can't get from any other game. So we've really enjoyed making this game with them, and we hope to maybe make more down the road. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Is there one more game you there want is. to talk about? There is. Okay. So and this, this is a brand new one, right? Yeah. I hadn't seen it before. So this is the ninth world. Um, one of the designers, Bo, is demonstrating it at the moment. Um, let me get, let me reach over and grab the boxes, and I'll show you how it comes together. The box comes like this. It's a big monolith, right? We pop the unusual shape. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, gets more unusual. Then there's this sort of chest kind of thing, some map yeah. of the world, right? Which comes out into board form, right? And then all the stuff is tucked into the trays at the top. And so you can just pick it up, do this not worry about anything falling out, which is pretty cool. So this game takes place a billion years in the future. That's Ilion with a B. And, uh, whoops, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. No that was horrible. Um, and so what's going on is they're exploring one of the worlds on the map, uh, one of the um, regions on the map. They're, uh, this game plays either uh, cooperatively or competitively. It's the first time we've ever been able to pull that off. Right, you can play it as solo as well, and uh, wow, that's, yeah. that's a triple threat, right? Yeah, you've never, I've never <laughs> been able to do that. But basically, the game plays pretty much the same in all modes. Uh, there's just a few additional rules for co-op because the game is trying to kill you, and so uh, the um, it's a skill building game, which means you have a hand of five cards, and you never have more or less than five cards, but you're improving those over the course of the game, and so. Uh, you can see if you look on the table that uh, they're dealing with all sorts of creatures and quests and stuff like that. And uh, they, uh, they're finding all these ciphers that are littering the roadside. The concept is that the age of man has risen and fallen eight times. We're in the ninth world. But all the stuff from all the previous eight ages is still lying around. So, so you're like, oh, what's this strange device? You put it on your head. You hope it doesn't eat it. Right? Like ancient technologies that come back. Yeah, absolutely. So it's kind of like a sci fantasy game. Uh, we made this with our friends at Monty Cook Games. It's based on the Numenera world, which I fell in love with immediately upon them producing it. And Bo and Paul came up with a mechanic that, that went perfectly with that. So we just made the game together. It's really a fantastic game. Uh, it's probably one of our best sellers now. And I think a lot of people are really getting into it. So yeah, it's been great. It looks great. The art looks really beautiful. I love cooperative games, so I'm definitely interested. One, uh, of our, one of our goals is our games just have to be gorgeous. Like we, we, we have to look at these all the time. And so our games just have to jump off the shelf to us. And so we really go out of our way to make sure that the look is perfect. And uh, that's people just come over to our booth not having any idea what our games are about. And they're like, I don't know what this is, but I want it. And it's really great. Awesome. Well, before uh, we say goodbye to you, I have one more question. Yes, and uh, and uh, we're just asking everyone this question. What uh, 
unique uh, experience that you do you want to bring to uh, the board game community? How do you want to build the board game community, or what's your vision for it? Well, we're, we're very deep in the story, as is fairly obvious, right, with the games that we've talked about. <laughs> We want people to feel like the, that story isn't an intimidating thing. Like a, with a lot of role-playing games, you know, it's it's terrifying to be the dungeon master, right? It's it's scary, right? So we just want to break down all of those barriers and make sure that our games are deep and immersive, and often they have like hidden things that you can find in them, puzzles, any number of things like that. We want you to dive into our games and just say, this is something I play because I love it. And uh, it seems to work out. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mike, Thank for you, uh, interviewing with us. And it's been a pleasure. Okay. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye. Hey, guys. Michael Wright here from unfiltergamer.com. And we are at Gen Con 2018 with Jason of Green Couch Games. And we're going to be talking about, well, a couple of his new games. We had to review a couple in the past, like Walk on Fire, a really uh, big favorite in our household. But he's got some new and interesting titles that we want to talk about. So go ahead and get into it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, one of our next games is going to be hitting stores. It's going to be Best Treehouse Ever, uh, Forest of Fun. It is a sequel to our best-selling uh, Golden Geek nominated game, Best Treehouse Ever, that can be combined with the with the original to play with more players. But as a standalone game, it also like has some new scoring methods, some new twists on the beloved game. So that'll be hitting stores uh, this fall. We're just getting ready to uh, get it off the boat and fulfill it to Kickstarter. And we're really excited. It's our first bigger box game. Yeah, this, uh, I guess that'll, most of the games here are pretty small, condensed, yeah. like, I mean, they're not short necessarily, but they're just like small box games. This is your big one here. That's right. you excited, huh? Yeah, very excited. We, you can put the original in there so you can carry it all in one happy package. Oh. And our thing has been to, like, create games that, that bridge the gap between casual gamers and more serious gamers looking for fillers, but all under an hour, all five minutes to learn or less, with a variety of themes and mechanisms to move them forward. So, I mean, specifically, Walk on Fire was one of those games where it was like, as people were coming into the house, we used to start playing around the table, you know, and then as people left, we'd start playing it again. And yeah, so, so it kind of was, it was a filler, but it was also a nice, thicker one. We got to enjoy playing multiple, multiple times. I and mean, that was the killer with these games, is they're just like, you want to play them over and over again. So you have Forest, uh, <laughs> Best Treehouse Ever, Forest of Fun, yes. and then you have some other titles too, I, yeah. I suppose you want to talk about? Absolutely. So uh, one of the ones that's coming up on Kickstarter soon is by uh, Jason Slingerland, who's one of the hosts of the Building the Game podcast, as well as um, a game designer of a game called uh, Unreal Estate. It's a really neat card game. So we I haven't heard that one. Oh, it's, it's from Grand Gamers Guild, so it's, it's worth taking a look at if you like small games at all. Yeah. Uh, so this one is uh, a game where you're kind of traveling through the Black Forest, and um, you're going to be challenging and coming across different encounters. And these are uh, really, it's kind of like a Cards with Numbers German-style card game, area, a little bit of area control. Um, and it's got these beautiful animals that took place in all the fairy tales from Germany and kind of some magical items. And you're going to come along the trail and each of these different sections of the card, there's a different way to win. So it's kind of like a tactical, like trick taking meets area control thing. So like uh, at, at this location, the high card beats the low card. And then at this location, the low card beats the high card. This one, the suit has to match one of the suits above and you score the point value of that card. This is a different rule each round that has to be played face down. And it's like lo the lowest owl at that location away. Wins. So it's a really neat kind of like game that will work with just card playing people, but also something that that is uh, just quick to get to the table with with families with some really fun art. We're really excited. It, it, um, the Black Forest is where all those German fairy tales took place. It's not a huge um, it's not a huge like thematic game, but we just like love the way that those stories kind of pull us in because of the quirky characters. So we're hoping these kind of beautiful images kind of pull people into a neat game. game and the theme well. can also come out in just the people playing the game as well, you know. Yeah, so oh, absolutely. And then that, that's how we work, work with something like this anyway. And the artwork is beautiful. Well, that's a, that's so the much. first thing that catches my eye with this game. It's actually a, a new artist uh, named Daryl Jones that we've never worked with before, but he has a game on, on Kickstarter called Daubers. And, Daubers, uh, Quest for the Key. I interviewed him yesterday, oh, actually, yeah. and I reviewed his game. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so he's doing good stuff, and it's always great. Like That's one of my favorite things about getting to make games is that um, I get to work with super talented people in all these different fields, and we get to work together on the same project. And, and it's a small world, huh? It is. And then it brings people together in their homes and to create memories and like you know share space together. So that's a huge value of ours, and, and I'm glad to be able to do that. 
Awesome. So thank you for showing me these games. I know we have one more to show, and I think it, oh, I think we actually have an open space. Yeah, Do you want to go and check it out? All right. Yep. Yeah, this is Before the Earth Explodes. It's by uh, Daryl Andrews and Adrian and Adam Skew, who did Sagrada. Sagrada yeah. And Speakeasy just came out. Edge we had Con. another game that came out. We just got uh, Oregon Trail, which was oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that was cool, They too. are uh, they're, they're they do everything out up. a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah so this one is a two-player uh, kind of rock, paper, scissors kind of is the, is the main mechanism that moves the game. But you're really getting into each other's head. Uh, you're trying to either, you're trying to gain all the glory for um, saving humanity before the Earth explodes. So you're looking for seven new planets to colonize or developing your technology to seven or dealing seven damage to your opponent because you want to be the only one available to gain the glory. Uh, so you're stopping other people from saving yeah, the world, yeah. but what? <laughs> Yeah, you may be a little selfless in this pursuit. You could live on your as ship. As long as you save everyone, that's okay, though, right? Yeah, totally, totally okay. Save everyone else at the expense of just, you know, one ship loss. Not a big deal. Fair, fair. Yeah, so this is a, a very chunky kind of filler game. Lots of replayability. There's some variable win conditions that come up throughout the game that you can uh, attain for just your own strategy. So you're watching what the other players are doing. You're watching uh, what, what cards they're playing. You're anticipating what's going to help them the most. You're trying to counter that, but you know that they know that you're trying to counter that. So it's like the Princess Bride. Where is the poison is in my cup or your cup a uh, great game just it just uh hit, hit stores last month uh it's just kind of it has a mat too that you can get with the it play well, mat right? is yeah kind of like we we have some leftovers that we make available at shows and on our website like for folks who need a little extra you know table presents who are into those uh those warm fuzzy collectibles that aren't around forever so i like my knick uh, knickknacks and trinkets i really do <laughs> like i'll pick up things pixel tactics man I'm just like, i gotta have it i don't need it but i gotta have it so i totally get the the feel and the need for it you know awesome Awesome. But thank you very much for yeah. giving us all this introductory content that I haven't seen before. Uh, and I appreciate you taking the time to uh, send me games previously a long time ago. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's case is up. But I have one more question for you, and it's what do you want to bring to the board gaming community? What's the unique thing you want to do in, in the future or as in now the games that you're currently making? Yeah, I, so that's a good question. Wow, thank you uh, for making me feel uh, yeah, like make, I'm going to stump you a little bit. I'm going to be super eloquent now. Uh, uh, so, yeah. I really just want to bring people together. Like that that is the thing. Like uh we, we lack real life social space in this culture of like hyper hypermobility and like, you know, internet like providing kind of community in a sense, but it's just not the same as sitting across the table from somebody. So if we can help, uh, you know, parents connect with kids, if we can help friends like kind of share experiences together around our games, then like that's, that's, that's a win for me. So I like, I like, I love games. I like games that are portable that you can pull out and get people going quickly. So then whatever else happens around that game can happen around that game. The social experience, um, the storytelling, just engaging the critical thinking and imagination, whatever it is that like you can share with somebody else like that's what we try to try to think about whenever we're we're putting games and we know we always have that in mind as like the end goal is like one day this is going to be about people sitting across the table from each other so let's make sure that that is a great experience that we don't get in the way of that was a very nice and elegant uh <laughs> elegant speech there i i I don't think I could have done better. Oh, yeah. Anyways, Jason, I really appreciate you Thank taking you. the time. And I hope you guys check out his games. Uh, one last thing, too. Where, where, where can we find all your games? And Absolutely. Stuff like so uh, we're available in all the friendly local game stores. If they don't have it on the shelf, they can certainly get it. And um, you can go to greencouchgames.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Green Couch Games uh, or on Facebook at Green Couch Tabletop. Or you can join the 20 Minutes of Filler uh, podcast group on Facebook. Where we, I'm we, part of that. Yeah, we, we like to champion the little games uh, every once in a while on there. So. Hey guys, well, thank you, and as always, we look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hey guys, Michael Heat right here. We're at Gen Con 2018 right now, and we are with Darren, who's going to show us a new game called Ignite, a new type of deck builder, and he's with Ginger Snap Gaming. So let's go ahead and talk about the game Ignite. I know it is a modular slash deck builder style game with a couple twists and turns. But go ahead and tell me what it's about. Yeah, so... Imagine if Heroescape and Dominion uh, were combined into a game. Okay, wait. Uh, Okay, I can't. No, no, okay. Yeah. Uh, so the main complaint about deck builders is A, that there's not a lot of player interaction, and B, that the end game is sort of boring. I don't know if you just, yeah, just keep going. Yeah. Okay. The main complaint against deck builders is that A, uh, there's not a lot of player interaction, B, there's, the end game is sort of boring. So we added a map, and everyone starts the game with three units. In the final version of the game, they're going to be miniatures, uh, where you actually insert a dagger into the back when they take a point of damage. That's a little bit oversized, but you get the idea. Um, but for the prototype, we've been playing with cardboard tokens. Each token gets a three points of damage. When you take a point of damage, that's when you'll insert the dagger. 
So you'll see there's all sorts of terrain out on the board. So like lava kills you instantly. Snow requires two movement to move into it. Acid requires you to discard a card to move into it. Forest protects you from ranged attacks. So there's a lot of thinking about where is good placement for me. Combine that with the fact that if we hit all of our stretch goals, we'll have 10 different races and each of them have an asymmetrical race ability. So the humans draw an extra card, but everything is more expensive. Dwarves do extra damage with uh, their melee attacks. Elves get extra range. Uh, the tiger men get free movement. So between that, and then we also have a modular board. So each one of these will have a secondary side. Um, with oh, it's double-sided. I like double-sided. Yeah, nice. yeah. So you'll see actually out here expansion uh, tiles. You'll see the acid and the snow, which are in the expansion. But between the different asymmetrical race abilities, the different board types, and then we're going to have a hundred different, you would call them kingdom cards and dominion, they call them battle cards. We'll have a hundred different types of battle cards. So you'll never be playing the same game twice. So anything from a catapult, which is a war machine, you build it out at the beginning of a turn and it takes three turns to build. And it's essentially a, a free kill, an insta kill. Um, you've got shields that can block things. You've got bows and arrows. Um, the thing about bows and arrows is you have to have both the arrow and the bow in your hand at the same time. So it gives you a benefit because you can attack at range, but you have to have both of them in the same turn. So there's different cards like quivers that can help you with that. All the different things that you can imagine is what you can put into this game. Awesome. I mean, it looks great. I like I, I like deck builders. I like games like Clank that take it a little bit outside of the box and change it a little bit. And this is what you look like you're doing here with adding the modular board as well as the uh, uh, class abilities that are all unique to themselves. And of course, I hear I heard that you have three different types of gameplay, like competitive, cooperative, those different types of variants. I don't know, is there a solo player as well? Yeah, so we'll be launching uh, on Kickstarter early 2019, and we'll have a solo and cooperative uh, expansion that you can get. So if you like playing against the board, you know, not against each other, you can get that. And then there's uh, four different types of gameplay that you play with this. The main one is where if you get the last hit on someone, you take their miniature as a trophy. So whoever has the most trophies at the end of the game wins. Uh, the second one is last man standing, so whoever's got a unit on the board last. Then there's King of the Hill, so you get a point if you're in the bazaar at the end of a turn. Um, and you get three points if you're the only person in the bazaar at the end of a turn. So you're trying to battle for control of that. And then you can also play Team Deathmatch, which is totally different, totally crazy. Um, I know a lot of people heard Last Man Standing and they think, oh, it's player elimination. It's actually not. If all three of your guys are killed, you'll come back as water clones to your starting area. That means you summon one each turn, and it gets two movement and one free attack each turn. It helps people stay engaged. So you just stay in the game and play. Because exactly. when it's a longer game, you don't want to have players not doing anything. I think player elimination for a long game kind of blows. Yeah. So it's a good idea to add and include that. So it feels like a Battle Royale style game. I mean, I, I don't know, Hunger Games kind of like that. Kind of where you're going around killing each other. Also adding in the King of the Hill variants. So you have that like FPS feel to it as well. And then of course, tactical deck building with modular. There's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. I'm excited to see it. Once again, go ahead and explain when it's going to be on Kickstarter, where they can find out more information, websites, all that good stuff. Yeah, so it'll be coming to Kickstarter early 2019. Uh, you can find out about it at gingersnapgaming.com. If you go to our website and you sign up uh, on the homepage, you'll actually be entered for the week of Kickstarter giveaway. We're giving away one Kickstarted board game every day of the week for a week as a way to say thanks for giving us a chance. Awesome, and uh, I got one more question before you. I have to bail and go to some other place. What do you want to bring to the board gaming community that is different than anybody else? Um, I really want an innovative deck builder that allows people to uh, come together and um, have something that doesn't feel like you're playing solitaire the entire time. So a type of deck builder that hasn't been done before. Area control has been done before. The regular game has been rethemed and rethemed and rethemed, but no one's really done something with a battle royale. You know, if you love Blood Rage or um, Rising Sun, you know, some of the uh, Eric Lang games, uh, you'll like you'll like this if you like that and Dominion. Awesome, well thank you so much and I really do appreciate it. Ginger Snaps Gaming everyone, go ahead and check them out on Facebook and all the other good sites. All right guys, that's all I got for you this time and as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game uh, interview here at Gen Con 2018. I'm here with Rob at Scyther Gaming and we're talking about Overbattle the All War. 
So we're going to go ahead and get into it. What is it about and where is it going to be coming from? We are an area control game. Uh, tabletop warfare is in that genre. Uh, we have our background in Access and Allies and Twilight Imperium. And so we thought we could come up with something that sort of blends the mix between those two. And I think we've got, a, we've got something that's pretty exciting. This is a pretty big board here. How does it exactly play? How many players? How long does it take? All the basic stuff. We've got a couple of different campaigns. Uh, we could go a two player up to four player. There's also a three player version of one of the campaigns. The board's six feet by 30 inches, so it'll fit on a standard pop up. On this, we've got uh, Berkey's Game Toppers, and I got a 36 inch uh, wide, but the actual play surface 30 inches wide by six feet long. And like you said, it's basically like a game that's kind of like Twilight Imperium meets what again? Access and Allies. Okay, so it has that war area control feel to Absolutely. it. Diplomacy. How is it different? What, 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 it combines the two, but what, what else? Is right. it, we've got any new mechanisms? We've got, a pretty, we've got a few new mechanisms. We've got a character that is both friend and foe, and for part of that, that happens to be the Sin. Through his involvement, he's got a pretty unique game experience. He's going to both fight for you and defend for you against others until such time in the game where there's a trigger and then he's all on it for himself. And is it action based as Very far as movement so. goes? Okay, Very so you have like so. certain amount of actions and... Standard movements if you're in that tabletop warfare. We've got some defined movements where units have uh, the ability to move X amount of spaces, Y amount of spaces. Uh, we also have a three-dimensional game board so when you're in combat, we can take high positions and low positions to get advantages both on the assault and on the defense. Is this only a competitive game or is it a team game or is there any other variants like that? On one of the campaigns, there's a two-on-two -two team, but usually it's a one-on-one-on-one-on-one. -on -one -on -one -on -one. Awesome. Well, the game looks great here, and uh, if you want to check it out, is Overbattle the All War on Kickstarter when again? Q1. That's estimated about approximately, Correct. right? Um, one more question before I go. Sure. What do you want to bring to the gaming community that's different than everybody else? That's a great question. Uh, I would Something that sort of blends, that you, you can come in, have a big battle, but have it over a pizza, some drinks, and not have to take it over your whole weekend. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we can, get a, we can get a whole game in in four hours. Maybe you can play twice. That would be pretty nice, especially for a big war game right. like this. Well, it looks good, and I hope you guys go ahead and check it out. Uh, where can we find the game at? Uh, more information, that kind of stuff? Find us on Facebook, Scyther Gaming on Facebook. Uh, and then uh, you can go to scythergaming.com. That's going to right now redirect to our Facebook page, but that's where we're driving most of the, most of the volume. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, thank and you. I look forward to having you guys all check back out this next time. <laughs> Hi guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Gen Con interview. I am here at the Surfin' Meeple booth, and we are talking to Nikki. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Nikki. Uh, thank you for talking with us. And what's, uh, it looks like you have a really busy booth today. Yeah. What are some of the big games that you guys have out right now? Um, our new titles for Gen Con release were uh, Princess Jing. And that's a two-player game, and it's uh, from Madigo. And then we had um, a Seth, which is an expansion for Comet, and that is another um, Madigo title. And then um, we've got this one right here, which is Micropolis. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about... Uh, well, first, maybe like, what kind of games do you guys like to do at Surfing Meeple? Uh -huh. um, we uh, like to do anything that we find interesting. We really um, search at the cons and talk to people and play games and anything that we are interested in. So, awesome. Well, tell me a little bit of Micropolis, like, uh, you know, just a general, what it's about, objective, number of players, who would like it. Um, it's a really fun, either it's, uh, you can call it a family game, you can call it a fun filler game, you can call it an awesome party game. It's really, fills all those little spots. Uh, it's, it can be pretty rowdy, it can be really, I'm thinking very hard. Uh, the whole point of the game is to build your own, um, your, your own um, ant colony. So uh, everyone is going to start out with five of these really cute little ants and um, seven tiles to draft from to build your ant colony. 
and um, it's a typical kind of a drafting where the first one is free and then if you want anything further down the line you have to put an ant on it so if I wanted to draft this one I have spent two ants and I placed my uh, tile and the next and person could yeah well. if so they wanted to, to add them here. yeah and then you have to connect them yes okay. after you place your first one you have your tiles have to be on either side of that first place tile um, you leave uh, the board like this until you are down to one fewer tile than number of players in the game and then you slide everything that's left down and you fill it back up to seven so uh, let's see how many players does this take two to six two to six players um, and it's always going to be seven tiles Awesome, thank you. It seems like a really cute little like uh, puzzle and resource management type game. Uh -huh. There's yeah. a little more. Um, you're co you are collecting sets of fruits, oh. and um, you're going to get points at the end of the game for the sets of fruit that you have. And then you are also going to be, um, some of these tiles have some special characters on them, which break some of the rules. Like one of them, you can steal an ant from whoever's in the lead in the game. Uh, another one is um, some tiles have barracks on them. You can fill that barrack 100% um, full and you will get the points at the end of the game as long as that barrack is full. It also saves you from um, people stealing your ants as long as they're in the barracks. They're safe. So there's also some other really cute characters um, that make the game a lot more interesting than just drafting tiles and placing them. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, I like all the little extra elements you've added here. Um, I have one more question for you. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, what uh, what uh, sort of unique experience are you guys uh, bringing to the board game community? Mm -hmm. Unique to you guys. Unique to, unique to us. That's a tough or question. You, or, you, or you personally, or your, your vision, um, or you know what you want to do in the board game community. Um, we just want to get the games from publishers that can't find um, distribution from the countries that they're in. And we just want to help everybody and be able to find the great games and have access to the great games in their own language. and. It makes everybody happy, and it, as a community of gamers, it's, it brings everybody even that much more closer together when we have common things we can talk about. It's just great. <laughs> awesome. That was, that was a great answer. <laughs> okay. See, you had it in you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to thank us you. and sharing with us here at Gen Con. I hope you have a great con. You too. And uh, for our audiences, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hey guys, welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer board game interview here at Gen Con 2018. And I am with Phil and Brad from Wyvern Gaming, and we're going to be talking about Cthulhu, a deck builder, along with the expansion coming out, and even one more, maybe Sojourn, if we're lucky enough. Uh, so go ahead and talk to us about the base game of Cthulhu, and then what's coming up ahead. Uh, Cthulhu, a deck building game, is a cooperative game, uh, fully cooperative, for one to six players. And uh, basically, it's a group of investigators trying to stop the Elder Gods from destroying existence and uh... yeah so it's uh, like you said it's one to six players we have like 22 different investigators and it's a cooperative game. game too yeah cooperative yeah, yeah. yeah. So, which is which is really cool because uh, a lot of a lot of people who may um, not be um, uh, as advanced of a gamer they can get in with their ga other gamer friends who might you know be able to bring them along and have the same adventure together so it's it's easy to get other people into one of the things that we, we like to pride ourselves on in our games is they're very approachable and easy to learn, So, uh, but there's got the complexity you need for a, for an advanced game. And luckily, I got to review not only the first base game, but also got to check out the expansion with it. There is a lot of characters that come in the first game, and some reoccurring ones from the second game as yeah. well. Yeah. My personal favorite, and oddly enough, a uh, creator that also put himself in the game, <laughs> which is a pretty cool idea, the Time Traveler. The time There's a, a traveler. ton of different of the Cthulian horrors to deal with in the game, and it, the cooperative nature is so fun because you can make it very, very, very challenging or very, very, very simple. And which is nice because uh, the more in depth I got with the game, the more I found I started to like it a whole lot. And the cooperative nature came out, which is nice because a lot of deck builders where I feel like it's just me doing my own thing, and then, you know, which is fine, but I like the interaction. 
action. And I think this game gives a lot of that, and I want to see a lot more players getting into that whole cooperative nature of deck building board games, which this does. And of course, with the master of the Cthulian arts. So it's, it, it's amazing. I love it. So, so, yeah, so this one came out uh, a couple years ago. We kickstarted it. Uh, it was really big success. We've uh, it's been out in retail in the game stores now for a little while, um, and we're we're at the point where we're ready to do the expansion. So uh, Phil uh, looked at the the, the horror and Dun or the Dunwich horror, yeah, Dunwich and he, horror. it's so the new expansion is based on that. So um, <laughs> we went back and forth on whether or not. Uh, it was just going to be like a, a couple of cards or like an add-on. Oh no! Oh no! That's not no. what it turned into. No, that's... no, no. I was pretty adamant to make it a standalone expansion, so that you didn't even need the first game to play with it, but you could if you wanted to. We did. It became massive, but still a good time. Yeah, it's about a thousand cards all together when you combine the two. Um, and we added 11 more investigators. I'm sure we'll get some more through stretch goals. It will probably end up close to 40 investigators total between the two games. Yeah. Well, fair enough. The game looks great. I love the fact that you're adding all the new Elder Gods into it. I saw the Dunwich Horror 2, which can pop out. And the game's going to be, you know, generally you're fighting one Elder God, but sometimes the game can suddenly turn a huge twist, and then you're fighting two, potentially even three, yeah. which is nuts. But that's a whole bunch of fun. There's a whole bunch of theme in this game, which I really, really like as well. So I, I, I'm a big fan of the Cthulhu deck building game. You guys did a great job, and I'm very excited to see it come to Kickstarter. Yeah. And in its full 1,000-card goodness, solid stack together yeah. playing yeah. with people at the cons. Um, is that what you guys want to talk about, or did you want to talk about the other one as well? Sojourn? Yeah. Yeah, we can absolutely okay. talk about Sojourn. Sojourn is a uh, primarily a single player only game about the time traveler from the Cthulhu games, as you mentioned. Shocking! He might bear a slight resemblance to me. Um, and uh, he's lost in time, tr going to different destinations in history, trying to find the pieces of his time sphere and reassemble it so he can make his way home. However, the lore behind the game now is he actually probably doesn't make it home, and that will be real, revealed why a little later on uh, in a future product. I see. So basically because he found some really, really good looking gals out there, or because he fell in like a t tar pit and like... <laughs> maybe he ripped a, frat, uh, ripped a hole in the fabric of reality. That, that, that could be fun. I, <laughs> maybe. We'll see what happens. So where do people go ahead and check out your game? Where, where can they go pick up the original one and see the new one? Okay. So the uh, currently th this one is available on our online store. You can go to wyverngaming.com slash shop, uh, which is where you can find all of our, of our games, uh, including some add-ons like play mats and things like that where you, that we have. Um, the, Want me a play mat? <laughs> the, uh, uh, the, um, the Sojourn is, uh, we just finished the Kickstarter, so but we're still in the pre-sale, pre-order mode. So we haven't placed the order with the manufacturer yet, so we're still taking pre-orders before we get it. Yeah, uh, we're having a lot of stretch goal art that still needs to be made before we can make that. We have Sojourn is great. That's yeah, such have. a good experience. At first, it took me a bit to understand it, and as I started to gas, grasp it, which I'm sure it's all like fully fleshed, got the prototype, but it is a fun time traveling experience, and you have to make these really tactical decisions. Do you want to continue going this way or this way, or what do you want to sacrifice in order to do that? And it's nice seeing the solitaire games come out that are actually really good. So, yeah. so I continue. Yeah. The, well, there's also a, a two-player mode. There's a cooperative mode uh, for Sojourn that was unlocked as a stretch goal and, oh, a, really? and a competitive one as well. There's two different versions. We're adding a female time traveler uh, on the Karn or having another you know, with the, uh, on the, other side, the back side. Yeah, yeah, back, sorry, sorry. And um, they're going to be dual layers so you can have inset the cubes and they won't slide around and all that good stuff. That's, yeah. a, good, that's a really good idea. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, it'll, Your it'll, sliders for Cthulhu were a great idea too. Right. I really like that. Uh, and uh, the concept behind the versus game is one's kind of a time cop and one of them's trying still trying to get home and the other one's trying to prevent them from breaking time so, awesome yeah. that's awesome well thank you guys so much for taking the time and doing an interview with us here at unfiltered game we do it graciously appreciate it here at gen con you got one more thing to say oh yeah yeah, yeah. i got a question for you guys after this okay so um to get in on the kickstarter for uh cthulhu the dunwich horror there's a there's a pre-launch page right now. You can go to uh, Cthulhu dot launch rock launch rock dot com. Link in the description below. Thank you. Um, if you sign up there before the Kickstarter launches on October third, 
uh, we'll, we'll give you a 35% off coupon on our online store where you can pick up maybe the original game and uh, have it in time for the uh, for the, uh, the expansion. Awesome. So one last question for both of you. Sure. What do you guys want to do in the industry that's going to be different than everything else? What do you want to bring to the community of board gaming? Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, that is a tough one. I want to bring good games that are not hard to set up, that are easy to learn, and but still have complexity from the basic simple rules like Cthulhu where things can get complicated and crazy just by cars interacting off each other. And I'd like to bring more of that instead of things like, I mean, Gloomhaven's great, for example, but it takes an hour to set up. And a lot of people don't, or don't have that kind of time investment to put towards it. You got some? No, that's, he, he nailed it. All right, great. Well, thanks guys for taking the time here at Gen Con. I hope you guys have a great time. It's been pretty crazy. I know we're all, energy is soaked, even though you can't probably tell from right now. But all right guys, thanks for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hi guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Gen Con interview. I'm Callie, and I'm here at the USAopoly booth with Jake. Hi Jake, how's it going at Gen Con? Good, really good. We've had a great show. Um, can't believe it's day four already, um, but it's been extremely popular and uh, just excited the game with everybody. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, your booth has been popping. So uh, tell us a little bit about the range of different games you're showing off today. Yeah, so we have um, a debut uh, here at the show, which is Samurai Jack Back to the Past, um, one of our new Project Ray Gun games. Um, we're previewing some other games, some uh, new Harry Potter games, Fantastic Beasts, a Snow White gemstone mining game, um, as well as Blank Slate, which I know you guys reviewed. Um, and then showing off the classics like Disney Code Names and uh, Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. So we got something for everybody um, here at the show, and it's been jam-packed the entire time. Yes, we did review Blank Slate. I love it. Great party game. Uh, uh, you also have some great IPs, Harry yep. Potter, love Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but tell us more about the Samurai Jack game, like yeah, yeah. a little bit of synopsis about it, maybe yep. show it off a little. Yeah, sure thing. So we have it right here, um, Samurai Jack Back to the Past. It's a two to five player game for $35. Um, in this game, you are playing as one of Jack's friends, traveling along the path um, and drafting cards. So it's a semi-cooperative card drafting game. Um, and when you move to a spot, you'll draft a card from that zone and use the cards to turn them in for points in order to defeat the villains at the end of the track. Um, so it's semi-cooperative because we have uh, Jack has his own movement as well as Aku, and if Jack's ever left alone too long, it drives him more insane, and we do not want that to happen because that's the way we lose the game. Um, so it's really fun. It comes with some beautiful pre-painted minis, um, nice components, um, and a great way to celebrate the great show that was Samurai Jack. Yeah, the artwork looks so vibrant and fun. Um, looks like a great, I love cooperative games, so yeah. even semi-cooperative yeah. is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's a nice touch. I mean, you're still trying to be the winner at the end, but um, all of Jack's friends are trying to help Jack, you know, return home back to the past for anybody who's familiar with the show. Um, it's got screen grabs from the show, um, so all your favorite moments, all your favorite characters are found in the show. Um, so it's an absolutely beautiful game that we're getting a great response here at the show. It'll be available uh, August 10th for retail, so it's a little pre-launch here at the show, but uh, for those at home, you can get it soon. So if uh, someone wanted to find out more about any of these games, where's the best place to go? Um, USAopoly.com or follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter um, for all the news on latest releases. Um, and we'll be sure you guys also have uh, the news and some hot games as well, so uh, you can share it with your fans. <laughs> yes, okay, I have one more question yes. for you, Jake. Uh, so, what do you see you or USAopoly bringing to the board game community that's unique to you guys? Um, I really am pushing that we are doing uh, more immersive games, so really taking the license and giving you a good game, right? Not just label slapping, absolutely giving you a deep dive into a license. So, like our Thanos Rising game, that is a game where you are playing the Infinity War movie uh, from the Avengers, our Harry Potter Hogwarts battle, you are literally playing through the entire movie series. Um, Samurai Jack, we're giving a taste of that. Our Fantastic Beast is the same way. So we're really hitting home immersive games um, and trying to dispel the notion that licensed games can't be good games because they can and we're proving people want wrong uh, one game at a time. Awesome. Thanks so much for sharing, thank Jake. You. Thanks for having thank us you. on here. And thank you, everyone, for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hey, guys. Mike right here with Unfiltered Gamer. And we're here with Josh talking about Gamma Grunts. And he's with Hipline. And uh, 
We are currently at Gen Con doing some crazy interviews. This is our last one of the day, so you better make it count. This has got to be a good one here. So tell us about your game, Gamma Grunts. Gamma Grunts is what we call a deck smash game where you play a mass. What do you mean a deck smash game? You smash the deck on the ground? Well, kind of. Um, you actually smash them in the face more than the actual deck. But we'll, Yeah, so deck smash means that it's basically you build up your deck as a player, and it's your job as a player to break down the other person and smash their deck. So you make them, all the cards that they're getting, you make them get rid of. And so you gain what we call infamy, which is like the victory points. So it's a battle. Isn't victory. infamy a bad thing? Not as a mad scientist. As a mad scientist, the most infamous mad scientist will always gain world domination. Or like get there first, right? Beautiful. And so this is your game right here, huh? Yep, this is it. So you uh, you have this gamma juice, which is the resource in the game that you, as a mad scientist, that's not Mojo, is it? Uh, no, it's very similar to Mojo right there, <laughs> but um, it's radioactive, and you. Create... That's not similar at all, then. No, not similar at all. <laughs> and you create these grunts, which are like your little minions and everything. Um, and it they... reminds me of that uh, that rock movie where the goo, and then they turn. It's like Doom. Yeah. They use the goo. It's it's like uh, it's like every other scientist movie ever. Only like you get to take on the role of that. And so, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty rad. Um, How many players? Kickstarter, what's going on with this game? Awesome. It's two to four players. Uh, we're going to be launching on Kickstarter in nine days well, on August 14th. That's pretty soon. It's pretty darn soon. It's crazy. You're lucky if I get this out in time. I, you know, I, I will. You know, if you're watching this, it's not out yet, okay? Well, that's fair. I mean, uh, you know, like no pressure whatsoever. Um, I mean... You know, I, I might judge you a little bit. No, I'm just kidding. No. Uh, yeah, we're um, we're gonna be launching on uh, August 14th. It's something that we've been working on for a long time. So it's like, it's kind of crazy that we're gonna be launching so soon. But um, if you like battle, like in in card games and deck building and uh, you know being a mad scientist, this is the game for you. And right now you're currently at the Indie Game Alliance table, right? So they kind of let you get, have a little space here on the Tanoa. And... Oh, yeah. We, we're, uh, we're actually members of the Indie Game Alliance. And uh, if you're a game designer, it's definitely hip to be a part of them because they are awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to show us a little bit about your game. And the Indie Game Alliance, I'm actually a, I'm actually a member as well myself as a reviewer. I got one more question for you. This is a big serious one, all right? What do you want to bring to the game industry that's different than everybody else? Uh, I would say a little bit more uh, interaction that's fun. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, you have these highly competitive scenes of like Magic the Gathering and these very, very competitive like kind of on the edge where people can get really, really hurt uh, whenever they lose and they have to like put a lot of time and energy into like being the best. Well, I want a game that's uh, environment that is is it makes you walk away like even if you lose you're having fun because that's really the, the the most important part is like if you can be positive and be happy that's what I want to create in people so you can be competitive and still have a good time if you lose in my mind all right I like I like that answer that's good yeah. it's a nice, nice way to end it well thank you so much for taking the time man I really appreciate it I'm glad we got to have this the last interview here anyways this is Michael Wright from Gen Con for the last interview signing off and I'll see you next time